Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today we're going to be talking about hexavalent chromium, or chromium-6, and whether or not it's produced in an electrolysis tank using stainless steel anodes. And we're going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has purchased my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I just want to say thank you so very much. So let's get on into the video. Over the last couple of years, I've heard a lot of people talking about hexavalent chromium with electrolysis tanks. And they say never, never, never use stainless steel anodes when cleaning cast iron with an electrolysis system. I've even had people ask me if I've watched the movie Aaron Brockovich. And I have, and it's a good movie. Now, I understand the risk when it comes to hexavalent chromium. It is bad stuff. There is the possibility of producing hexavalent chromium with electrolysis using stainless steel. One thing I did find out, in order to produce hexavalent chromium or chromium-6 with electrolysis, for one, you need to have a lot more power than what you're probably going to be using with a manual battery charger. Most people only use about 10 to 15 amps. Now there, for a little while, I was using a 40 amp battery charger. But here recently, I've been using two DC power supplies at 10 amps apiece. Now those, or even my 40 amp battery charger, could not produce enough energy to produce a hexavalent gas. I don't know what the exact limit is or the exact temperature that has to be reached, but I think there has to be a high temperature, plus there also has to be high power. And so far, I've not reached that. And yes, how do you know that? Well, I went out and I purchased this little test kit, and it is a Chromium 6 test kit. That has all the little test swabs inside, and it has the on the outside where you can hold your test swab up to it and uh, test your water. So what is happening when you set up an electrolysis tank, you connect your, your negative lead onto your cast iron, your positive lead onto your sacrificial anodes, and that energy flow is leaving the cast iron and making its way to the sacrificial anode, thus causing the old seasoning and rust and other things that might be on the cast iron to break loose and fall away. So we're not going the direction where we'll be losing particles on the stainless steel. Now, if you were going the other direction, there might be an issue. So with that in mind, I have decided to quit using a stainless steel hook for my cast iron. I will use either an iron hook or even something plastic. That way I don't have any issues of it going that direction with a stainless steel. The energy is flowing from the cast iron onto the stainless steel instead of the other way around. But I was still kind of thinking, maybe I need to check this out. So I went ahead and ordered this test kit. Now I will leave a link to this. Now this is a um, Waterworks Chromate. And it's a Chromium 6 test kit, which is hexavalent. I got this on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the video description if you want one of these. They weren't too much, and I thought, hey, there's a lot of test strips in here. I don't know how many, but there is a lot of them. So I'm gonna test periodically just to make sure, and so far, every time I've tested, it has came back negative to the point where I can't even tell the difference between the test strip that I tested with and the other brand new ones that have never been tested. So it has not changed colors whatsoever. So at this point I'm safe. I brought a little bit of a water supply from my electrolysis tank. And I'm just gonna test it one more time on video just to make sure I'm not producing any hexavalent chromium. And so far, so good, not a problem whatsoever. I think these big electroplating companies, they have a lot of problems getting rid of their wastewater because they produce so much and they use high heat and high energy. So they're producing chemicals that we probably are not even capable to produce with our small home setups. Without further ado, we'll just take a little test. Let me pull the camera down and see what we're doing. So I've got my water 
from my electrolysis tank. The instructions on the test kit says dip one test strip into the water sample for two seconds. Remove the strips and shake once briskly to remove excess water. Wait 30 seconds, then match to the color chart below. Complete color matching within 45 seconds. So here we go. We're going to put it in here for 1,001, 1,002. Shake briskly one time. So we're going to wait, it says, for 30 seconds. At this point, we don't have any color change and we're going to match. As you see, it's not even on the scale. And let's take another fresh one out. And this will be the, probably one of the better ways to test. If you can't even tell the difference between the one that's not been used in the test, I turn them around and the one that has been. So if there's a little bit of trash on this one. So from the test strip that we have here, we have a negative result of chromium six. I'm gonna keep testing. I'm not maybe gonna test every day. I'll probably test, especially after I run a lot of cast iron through there, maybe after every four or five, six pieces, and test again and just see if there's a possibility of a buildup. Now I've been testing pretty regular for the last maybe uh, two weeks now, and I've got, like you see, no results of positive whatsoever. Uh, I think that uh, Julia Roberts, she fixed some water for the guy, the lawyers or whatever that came in. She said, if there's nothing wrong with the water, then go ahead and drink it. <laughs> and, he, and he didn't want to drink it. Well, I can just tell you this, I'm not going to be drinking my electrolysis water. But I will say this, if you're worried about it, don't use stainless steel. Just use some other type of anode, probably iron or a lot of people use rebar. And, you know, stainless steel does clean up so much easier. And like I said, so far I have had no positive test. Now, if I was going to be using 100 amps and producing a lot of heat, I think I might be a little worried about it. But at low amps and low heat, it's probably not going to be an issue whatsoever. So I hope that you got something out of this video and it, you found it to be helpful. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more of them coming. Check out Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also have a Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group. It's a great group full of people who love cast iron, love sharing and connecting. I will leave a link to all these sites in the video description below, along with the affiliate link on Amazon to this Hexavalent 6 test kit. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I just want to share something with you really quickly. In James chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begat he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. I just want to say, share the word and be a blessing.